Good morning, folks. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Uh, my name is Rohan. I talk a bit about myself and the rest of us uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, we have a few of us uh, from, from the audience standpoint who have come in, uh, yet awaiting a few of us to join in. So we'll give them a couple of minutes uh, as they come in, and then we jump uh, right in. Uh, so thanks a ton, uh, Ma, thanks a ton, FT, thanks a ton, Sonal, for taking the time uh, to join us today. Uh, and we'll probably take about a couple of minutes as the rest of them come in, uh, and then we'll get started. Um, if that's okay, a customary thing over the last couple of years, just to ensure that we're all able to see me, hear me, and perhaps we could just, uh, you know, quickly do a round to ensure that uh, Mark, FT, and so on, and all of us perhaps are able to hear um, the others as well. I hear you perfectly fine. Fantastic. Likewise. So do I. Super. All right, I think we'll give it a minute more and then uh, we jump right in. How's the week been for all of you? Good, L hectic, busy. Long week, but yeah, <laughs> looking forward oh. to the weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> in that sense, Thursday sits right uh, smack at the center, right? It's a good time to take a foot of the pedal and then get back. Yep. Hello, FT. Hi, Sonal. Good afternoon. Hi, Mark. Hi, Sonal. Hi. Hi, all. Wonderful. Uh, so what we're going to do, of course, um, you know, is we've got obviously a tight schedule back for today. So ensure that we uh, make the maximum of the time that we've got here. So perhaps some of the others could uh, trickle in, but I'd like to ensure that we get started, you know, right on time. Um, what I'd like to do as we get started, of course, is um, to sort of set context, to you know, get some of the introductions done. Um, and then we get to right into the, uh, you know, the, the discussion of sorts. Now, uh, allow me to be able to take time to introduce each of you in a short uh, sort of span and, and, and allow you to as well uh, add on to it. Um, uh, Fontan, if that's okay, we probably refer to you as FT. Um, yeah, fantastic. Uh, thanks a ton for taking the time to be with us. Fontan is a uh, Senior Executive Vice President, uh, Group Human Capital at Maybank. Uh, among other things, his area of interest is future of work, turnarounds, um, and transformation of talent. Uh, currently based in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, um, among a ton of things that he studied, he's, he spent time at the Harvard Business School, as well as INSEAD to be able to, you know, um, sort of, how should I say, get to learn a lot in that sense. Uh, 25 years of experience across myriad of different trustees. Uh, some of the more famous organizations that he's worked with our Coca-Cola, B. Braun, uh, within the banking space, uh, you know, OCBC, a very, I mean, I, I spent about three years in Singapore, a bank with OCBC myself. So, you know, very famous bank uh, uh, across Asia Pacific uh, and Maybank a significant amount of, uh, you know, chunk of time with Maybank as well. Uh, many thanks uh, FD for taking the time to be with us uh, and to share, you know, your insights and experiences as we go along. Uh, may I ask you to perhaps add anything that I may have missed for the benefit of our audience to get to know you better? Um, no, I think uh, it's succinct, it's fast, it's compact. Uh, pretty much tells uh, a story about who I am in that space of time. Uh, looking forward and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Such a pleasure to have you. Thanks, FT. Uh, our, our second panelist for uh, the discussion today is Mark Fernandez. Uh, Mark's Senior Vice President, Human Resources and Head Organizational Capability and Development at Kodak Life Insurance. Uh, Mark is a skilled and well-rounded uh, OD and human resource practitioner, uh, have about 17 years of experience across big four management consulting firms. Uh, he's been recognized as a global thought leader in the year 22 in the space of Ellen OD uh, by LinkedIn, the only one from India in that particular space. Um, uh, you know, among multiple areas within the human resources, it's organization strategy and design, leadership and succession planning, OD, human process, uh, you know, interventions, coaching and counseling, um, and uh, DEI, some of the areas that he spent a lot of time. He's an ICF uh, certified coach. Um, 
in you know his his interest in teaching essentially is where uh, you know he spends uh, a part of his time with the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, uh, one of the well-known institutes, not just for research but for um, you know for um, learning within our space. Um, uh, you know that's um, another piece outside of work. Mark is a distance runner and a kickboxing enthusiast, right? Um, many thanks, Mark, for taking the time to be with us through your busy schedule. Um, and, you know, if you may probably want to add, uh, you know, anything from what we've discussed here, just uh, to ensure for our, for our audience's uh, benefit. Nothing else, Rohan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thanks a ton for taking the time. Uh, it takes immense pleasure for me to introduce uh, to you the third panelist, uh, Dr. Sonal Sushil Modi. Um, she's the Vice President Enterprise Technology Learning and Insights Team uh, at MasterCard, uh, currently based uh, at Pune in India. Uh, about 22 years of industry experience uh, across a you know, spectrum of industries. Um, you know, a large part of the work in the recent past that Sonal has done essentially has been uh, with executive business leaders, including CEOs, COOs, CFOs, and Vice Presidents. Um, a lot uh, from a perspective of content of work has been in OD interventions, uh, you know, talent reviews, competency frameworks, um, and among other things, uh, you know, the space that you spend a lot of time on are digital academies and technical capability and competencies at an organizational level. Um, you know, spend a, a while across uh, multiple, um, what should I say, industries, including banking, financial, um, oil and gas, entertainment, insurance, um, and ton. Um, of course, thanks a ton, Sonal, for taking the time uh, to be with us and share your valuable experiences and learnings throughout. Thank you, Rohan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what I'm going to do now, uh, for those of us perhaps, um, you know, uh, who don't know uh, the space that we are in, uh, I represent the organization Nullscape. Uh, we're into, uh, you know, helping, we're on a mission to help organizations and leaders uh, get future ready. And from that uh, sort of sense, a lot of the work that we do is not only helping organizations and leaders focus on lead now, which is a lot of the work that we do in terms of leading self, leading others, and leading business, but also in the space of lead next. Uh, and when we talk of next, it is essentially about how are we heading into the future? What are some of the things that, uh, you know, as an organization, as a leader, we need to keep in mind? Uh, and a major chunk within the lead next essentially is how are organizations experiencing uh, you know, the disruption that digital has brought in. And what are organizations doing then to be able to work through the digital transformation process? Today, of course, um, hence is one such initiative that we run, uh, not from the perspective of learning in that sense only, but in terms of, uh, you know, picking up from experiences uh, from industry practitioners. And the focus today essentially is from the BFSI industry. Uh, you know, interesting as we see this particular panel, they come from within the BFSI space as well, multiple areas. And that gives me the pleasure in sort of diving into some of the details, just perhaps a few seconds from now. So we've got a representation from a bank, we've got representation from uh, insurance as a space, we've got from, uh, you know, premium gateway sort of perspective, we've got, you know, talk about it, and we've had this uh, on the panel, we've got a geographical spread as well, so some of the experience would be across uh, all of the space. Uh, my name is Rohan, um, and I'm uh, the Associate Vice President for Talent Consulting at Nolscape. Uh, you know, my team essentially works with, uh, you know, organizations like the ones that you've got here on this panel to help them work through their digital transformation. So um, thank you so much once again, uh, Sonal, Mark, and FD for joining us. I'm going to dive right in. Um, and the format of the discussion actually is pretty simple, just for uh, the benefit of our audience. There are some, um, you know, so the frame to this discussion is to be able to understand how digital transformations work, uh, the experiences uh, that the panelists bring in in terms of their uh, work experience, specifically from the BFSI space. Um, and as we go along this conversation, uh, if if some of you would want to put in your questions, uh, you know, feel free to do that uh, on the chat. What we will also do as we go along is, um, you know, as the conversation moves along and we get some of the insights. Towards the end, we would keep about 10 minutes for, for Q&A. So as your questions come on to uh, the Q&A, we'll sort of, you know, pick those in. And then we'll, uh, you know, let the lines open, as they say, uh, towards the end to take questions if there are, right? So with that, uh, without further ado, let us jump right into uh, the conversation. So, uh, you know, what I want to put forth, uh, you know, to the panel uh, as we start, um, and perhaps, Sonal, if that's okay, we could perhaps start with you. Uh, you know. 
digital transformation can be defined in a myriad of ways, right? There's a ton of views that you could take off this. What's your idea of digital transformation um, and its significance in the business ecosystem today? So from a broad lens, how do you see this? Uh, thank you, Rohan, for asking that question. Very critical at this point in time. And as you rightly said, that it could actually be explained and defined in my rate base. But for me, if I have to look into it, digital transformation for organizations is primarily focusing on a couple of important elements. We do digital transformation for elevating customer experience. We want to ensure that digital transformation actually brings an increase in efficiency, enhance the operational process, and exponentially it has to trigger the value proposition that organizations are offering. So primarily it is leveraging appropriate technologies and driving future growth and innovation. And therefore, it definitely is very pivotal for us to understand that it is the thing to happen. It is going to stay. We have to acclimatize ourselves as organizations into it. And for me, it is the right technologies coupled with people, processes, and operations, which can give the organization the adapt, uh, you know, ability to adapt very quickly, think disruptively, and uh, actually focus on evolving customer needs and solving it for a purpose. Fantastic. Thanks, Adan Sonu, for adding that with, with perhaps the customer at the center, right? And how are some of the other elements that are fitting in to ensure um, you know, benefit for the business? Thanks for sharing your perspective, Mark. Uh, would that be okay for me to just get your sense from this as well? Sure, Rohan. So to my mind, I will elaborate on what Sonal says, and I completely agree with what she says. Uh, the entire piece stands on two pivots. One is the technology aspect of it, and the other is the people aspect of it. So if you ask me in the way I look at digital transformation, to my mind, it is basically an integration of the technology, the digital technology in all areas of your business, you know, that speak with strategy. And therefore, it changes how you possibly operate and deliver value to your customers you know because it's the customer who at the end of the day is the cornerstone of your value chain right everything yeah. starts from there so that is as far as the digital and the technology aspect is concerned but it would be incomplete if this was not accompanied by a cultural shift in the organization you know right. which mind shift so this is where the organization also requires skills coming in, new ways of work coming in, and people adapting to bring in innovation, disrupting existing status quo, and experimenting continually along the le learning curve. You know? So to my mind, that it's the jugalbandi of both of these that lead to what one calls as digital transformation. Wonderful. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Mark. A couple of things that run through my mind as, as I hear what you say is not just technology, of course, um, you know, it's people as well. So it's not just skill, it's also mindsets as well. Right. But the other beautiful thing that I pick as well is, uh, you know, the, the view that digital transformations are a long term, um, you know, view. it's not to say that I'm reacting to something here and now and trying to solve, for, you know, for just what's here. So it's operational, of course, yes, eventually from an execution standpoint, but the view has to be a lot more long term and strategic. That's good. fantastic. Sure. Thanks, Mark, for sharing that. Uh, FT, may I ask you to, to put in your views as well? Well, it's always uh, best to go last or difficult to go last because, you know, everything has been said, right? Uh, I couldn't agree more with both Sonel and, and, and Mark. Uh, perhaps a elaboration would be the mindset that Mark was talking about. Let me bring you back a couple of years ago, right? Uh, so all of us know what happened a couple of years ago, uh, 2020. Uh, and at the onset of uh, COVID, a lot of organizations, I, I wasn't at the bank yet. Uh, I was at another organization, yeah, uh, a, te a technology organization, um, which at that time, obviously, it wasn't that difficult to move towards a digital frame because they were already there. Unfortunately, there were many, many uh, that could not make the transition as smoothly. And... Immediately, the business suffered, the strategy suffered. So strategy that can't work because the supply chain cannot be executed uh, simply because you can't you know, get uh, anything done. 
uh, everything is locked down and if your processes or your, your structures were not digitally enabled or uh, digitally, the infrastructure is not prepared uh, to move towards that direction is a problem. Therefore, a lot of organizations uh, were scrambling to jump onto the bandwagon and call it digital transformation. Now that's a danger. When you jump on the bandwagon and start buying technology, as what Mark said, uh, buying is easy uh, and implementing it is a little bit more difficult and executing it, it's impossible uh, simply because the people were not ready. Uh, the customers were not used to the new way of doing things. Uh, so the customers were used to the old ways of doing things. The staff were used to the old ways of doing things. And when you just have the technology, that technology is just a tool, right? And that tool, uh, it's just a tool. So when you call digital transformation, I think it's a misnomer. Yeah, The danger of it, we call everything, you know, when we... Uh, digitize everything, we call it digital transformation. We buy a technology, we call it digital uh, transformation. The key is whether it is uh, able to be taken on board. Is our people ready to take on board? Is our customers ready to take on board? And that requires a mindset shift, uh, as Mark said, and, and Rohan, you said as well. And this mindset is the most difficult. Yeah. Um, good thing is, the good thing is uh, COVID accelerated this. We had no choice. You either get your mindset changed quickly or you become obsolete or you are eliminated from the, the supply value chain. So you have to survive. Unfortunately, I've also seen uh, in the course of this couple of years, there were many who could not change their mind uh, or, or their, their mindset shift didn't change and paradigm could not move as fast, uh, didn't survive. Um, and for those who survived it, now we understand buying technology is the least of our concern. Uh, you know, getting the best vendors is the least of our concern. It is how do we, you know, to, to use Mark's word, how do we integrate them? How do we enable them? How do we change the mindset of our people? Behavior needs to change uh, in terms of embracing this new way of working. You can call it digital, you can call it whatever you want to call it, but it is obviously a new, brave new world out there and that we need to be prepared. Absolutely, wonderful FT. I think uh, of a couple of things that you touched upon, I think uh, which really stand out for me essentially is the fact that it's not about buying. It's pretty simple to be able to just, you know, perhaps purchase a platform, purchase some technology and try and bring that in. Uh, it's about, you know, eventually how it lands. So the execution piece is, is not simple. And the other very uh, uh, beautiful thing that you said and that helps me work through the next piece is that it's not about processes getting digital, but is your business ready um, to be able to sort of, you know, uh, uh, transform itself? So whether your customers are ready to operate uh, in, in a certain way, if your employees, um, you know, are set to be able to embrace some of the discomforts uh, that come with it. It's about saying whether people are going to lose jobs, whether it's about perhaps somebody's going to get redundant, um, and some of those challenges. And so, uh, you know, it's perhaps a good time to, um, you know, get a little bit deeper here, specifically from the spaces that you come in within your organization and industries. And so, uh, Mark, if I may probably, you know, just double click on one piece here. Uh, so, you know, if you looked at broadly from a business standpoint, if you go a little bit deeper, from the BFSI perspective now. So, you know, how would you describe the scope of digital transformation uh, within the BFSI space? If you go a little bit deeper, your experience within uh, Kodak Life, uh, how would you put a frame to this? Sure. So, the way I look at it, Rohan, is uh, yes, business ready readiness is definitely important, but at the way technology is changing, by the minute and how that is impacting the end customer. It is no more about readiness because change is happening. You have to be ready. There was a time where you could choose whether you wanted to be ready or not. Today, it's about survival and you have to play the game if you've decided to be on the playground. So then once you're there, it's not about readiness. It's about adapting and continuously innovating. 
because readiness then becomes a very reactive approach not a proactive approach right so there is something that i thought needs to be said at this juncture mm-hmm. and having said that i mean what is a digital transformation um, framework look like to my mind and this has been my experience in the journey that we are taking and take it for what you may uh, the transformation has elements you know and these elements become your so to speak um, markers along which you know that transformation must happen and how much of it is happening mm-hmm. and these could be largely customer experience right operational agility mm-hmm. culture and leadership mm-hmm. workforce planning and management and enablement and all of that Mm-hmm. and finally the digital technology integration piece because uh-huh. this is what actually drives your digital transformation under the larger business strategy agenda because your strategy irrespective of which industry you are in irrespective of where on that growth curve you may be will have to have touch points on customer on operational agility on culture and leadership on workforce enablement and on the integration of technology to bring all of this alive so huh. and if these touch points are not addressed through the transformation journey like ft said some time ago it's like addressing two of the three sides on a tripod it will not stand and therefore our journey that we are undertaking is spatial looking at interventions in each of these areas so has to bring the transformation piece alive over a period in time sure fantastic well said mark and and what you said reminded me of a book i read perhaps uh, beyond a decade ago uh, by andy grove you know um, only the paranoid survive right and and i think uh, it's no longer a choice whether you want to turn digital and whether you know you are ready for it what you're saying is that if you're on the field you ought to play the game right there is no choice the other beautiful thing that i picked from what you mentioned is that one may perhaps uh, a few years ago have thought there's a digital department if you will right and and they are the ones uh, expected to do something there but you know across multiple touch points what you're saying is irrespective of what function you are in whether you're in sales and perhaps years ago from a life insurance standpoint you may have had an agent coming in but today for example you've got to be able to work with uh, you know your web aggregators for example right um, and hence be able to still work with it and perhaps if you are operations as well uh you need to ensure how you probably are far more productive and and hence it cuts across different function right with the different absolutely and that's where the integration becomes essential so while customer will be looked at by marketing and right. hr operational agility by it right. culture and leadership again by the people function right. so the fact is they have to start speaking to each other so it becomes everybody talking the same language language therefore that's when the transformation becomes a meaningful one Fantastic! Thanks a ton, Mark, for adding that. FT, would you like to, uh, you know, share your perspective and your uh, insights as well? Well, I think the there is a need to differentiate between digitization and digitalization. I think this is something that uh, all of us know, but it is not emphasized enough. Uh, simply moving uh, from one platform to another, simply electronizing things, doesn't make it digital. Sure. Yeah. Um, it is the entire value chain it's an entire process but most importantly is the behavior that's uh, that's needed new skills uh, new new capabilities uh from a hr perspective i always like to to mention this uh, i've often been asked well, what are the new skills that is required when we are going through transformation uh, from a digital point of view um they expect those capabilities uh new supposedly new capabilities would be you know data related should be you know uh, coding related and so on and uh, more often than not my answer is that three one communication it's like hmm but communication is not new true communication is, is not new but unfortunately is more vital and more critical than ever because once uh, you think that we are we have uh, you know migrated to something that you can now do virtually and so on or on a digital platform and so on it goes away 
as a matter of fact, it doesn't go away. It becomes even more critical. The way we communicate may have changed a little bit, but uh, how and why we communicate needs to be emphasized even more. Second is something what I call common sense. Uh, interestingly, uh, common sense is not so common after all. Uh, and when everything, it is so easy that you can then just regurgitate things. You can just go online and just, you know, because it's so pervasive information, it's so pervasive that you can get it from anywhere. Uh, then you assume that, you know, for every ailment, you have a prescribed recipe for success or prescribed, uh, uh, you know, medication for it that you can just pawn off as your own when you take it off from, from somewhere online. Unfortunately, that's where common sense fails because problems in the digital world, problems in the new world, uh, is all unprecedented. So we need to solve these problems now. And third is there must also be a difference uh, in terms of what people construe as information and data and insights. They are all very different. Unfortunately, we are very data centric. We are very data hungry, but we are not very good in trans translating those data into information and even worse, uh, translating information into insights that help us make decisions. So we are always stuck at data because we are so you know, obsessed with data that we actually have data analytics. So I was like, why do you have data analytics? Shouldn't you have decision? Analytics. Why do you have data analytics? So you are analyzing data for what? Uh, if not to make better decisions, right? And that is what we need to do better. Uh, is decision making some uh, a new capability? No. We have been making decisions our entire lives, right? For right. as long as we exist. So communication, decision making, uh, not new. They are totally mm -hmm. not new. However, it has taken a different spin a little bit uh, in this new age of transforming ourselves to become more digitally enabled. So right. we need to be careful about you know, what kind of uh, capability uh, that we are emphasizing on and not lose our sight on what is really, really important. Right, no, wonderfully said, FT. There are a couple of things you know, that, that make sense to me as, as you shared this. One was, you know, having looked through a World Economic Forum a Future Skills report, perhaps about four or five years ago, which spoke about uh, the skills that are going to be a lot more in focus 2025 and there onwards, right? And some of them were sort of commonsensical, as you mentioned, you know, essentially about being able to deal with oneself well, right? And, and communicate, um, you know, uh, people would have thought about AI as, as a skill for tomorrow, but there was EI that was sort of focusing on that essentially. And so interesting to see how something that is more commonplace may not be technology driven, but human centered, right? That's important for the future. Uh, and, you know, as I, as I heard some of the things that you mentioned, what also came to my mind was uh, some of my experience in the past. So, um, you know, worked with an organization which was heavy in, in engineering. Um, and figured that you know you could perhaps start a machine right at the end of the day but uh, sort of a smart factory if it would run there's one particular individual who's perhaps controlling it from multiple places all the more you know collaboration is important all the more communication is important i think that's what you emphasize in what you said yeah thanks for that um Sunil, would you like to add your view as well yeah i think uh, most of the points are well covered and uh, i would definitely like to you know uh, pick up on some elements of it, but undoubtedly digital transformation in BFSI has been at the core of its resilience in the pandemic type globally. We would all agree to that fact. And this, and look at the speed at which the customers have adopted so quickly, not even, uh, not only in urban areas, but even in rural areas, like today a Paytm and a Google Pay and the UPIs and the open banking and other kind of services that we have brought into picture is so easily adopted by folks, right? And this definitely called for an unwarranted and accelerated transformation in the sector. But sure. as rightly mentioned by the other two panelists, you know, digital transformation is not all about getting platforms and just, you know, putting them into the organization and asking the people to sail through it. It's absolutely not that. It's more about having a great strategy. It's very important when you are actually going through a digital transformation to have a very curated, thoughtful strategy envisaging what is the as of, you know what would be the future but also at the same time looking at what is our as a state what is the need of the art 
where are we at which milestone are we as an organization what kind of digital transformation should be brought into picture keeping a couple of elements in mind like who is your customer segment what kind of technology and platforms you have today what does your talent landscape look like because everything revolves around them right the skills and the capabilities that we are talking about and rightly mentioned i i couldn't agree more with what ft said you know hr is asking this very typical question of what kind of skill should we be ready with and it's not about ai and data entry because that anyways our tech savvy folks are going to pick it up you teach them or don't teach them they are evangelists on their own and they're going to pick that up very clearly however what is important is you know having that bent of mind for example in organization like ours which is a technology organization we have engineers and they're super experts what we are looking at is actually building or enhancing the craft of this engineers to have a product bent of mind because we should not forget that we are building everything for the customer so if an engineer doesn't have that product bent of mind or what he is building for whom is building for what are the pain points that he is going to solve it is a futile effort because you can get n number of developers in the market but you can't get engineers who are very thoughtful and all of these elements come as a part of digital transformation the mindset piece of it the technology piece of it the strategy piece of it and you know weaving all of these things together in a very curated storyline and then the most important piece is you know percolating this information to the grassroots level of people and everybody knowing what we are doing what will be our next phase is very critical for the journey for digital transformations to be very successful wonderfully said sonal i think uh, the one thing that i sense from what i heard from all three of you and each one can put this on the table is the beginning of of this transformation needs to start with a why right i mean why are we actually doing this and of course keeping customer at the center it's not about people and processes only it's about the why and then how you to go around it and so what i also wanted to do as we go deeper while there have been some thoughts that have come in uh, you know it'd be really nice um for you know all three of you to be able to look at let's say from from your context from the organization from perhaps certain examples that you could look at um and perhaps you could begin with ft you know at this point uh you know when you would look at the role of people and processes i mean i think we've kind of called that out right it's about technology and it's about people um, you know it's about customer at the center so if you were to sort of uh, you know distinguish the two and perhaps go a little bit deeper into each um would you be able to sort of call out some of the aspects that you've experienced from a people standpoint and the role of processes in digital transformation uh i think you know all of us agree that uh, for any transformation not only digital for any transformation organization transformation across the board uh, we have to start with the you know the question why right uh, if the purpose is unclear then the transformation just you know there is what was the objective of it um and, and for any transformation previously now and uh, in the future has to start from a starting point it originates from the customer because that is why we exist as an organization customer comes first so any transformation has to be has to then reflect the customer journey the customer value chain so if for example if we are technically uh, uh coming up with a product whatever that product is yeah not we are not talking about digital or not any product that product needs to be purchased sold to someone so that's the end end customer right then we start looking uh, back from the uh, customer side right to the product origination and uh, uh, around uh, the journey and all along the journey now whilst we go along the journey obviously there are uh, variables that come out of it that may not be covered by any organizations it may be you know because our product is for example a banking product but uh, the customer requires more than a banking product the customer needs uh, legal assistance the pro- uh, the the customer needs uh, uh, assistance from you know uh, a real estate agent or whatever it is regardless of what that product is now how do we then create a seamless uh, facilitated process for the customer we originate a product at the end the customer it needs to deliver on their own expectations right 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and how do we then ensure that the entire journey is being transformed in a way if it's going to be digitally enabled? So from a people perspective, that mindset needs to change because a lot of uh, the organizations, uh, most organizations, always think about this is what I think the product should be. We go and ask customers. We ask the customer, they want this product. So we create a product. And that's it. And we push the product out in the market. Then we wonder why it failed. It failed because it only meets maybe two or three objectives. But it is not enabling for the customers, right? So our people need to understand that. So design of product, design of process needs to come first from the perspective of the customer and not only asking what they want. It is empathizing with the journey that they are going through. And that has many, many issues along the way, right? So you put a product out to get, for them to even buy the product. They have to go through multiple, you know, steeple chases going up, you know, the hurdle, going down the streams, et cetera, et cetera, that, Organizations need to help facilitate that process. Uh, may it be digital, may it be a, a process, may it be a system, may, may it be whatever. Uh, so transformation is not as simple as just saying, okay, you know, uh, we're gonna, you can do it online. You can, you know, do comparators, aggregators. It's not as simple as that. Right. Just because there's an aggregator, uh, you, the customers may not be able to uh, meet their own expectations because there are so many other considerations that they have to make. So we need to think uh, from their point of view. Wonderful. I think FT, just to uh, you know put this in perspective, what you mentioned is the journey for a customer. Uh, if I were to probably, for a want of a better way to describe that offline, perhaps could be different uh, as an experience online. And hence to understand that uh, set of touch points and ensure hence the process doesn't come in inside out. Here's a product I want. But here's something that you need and, and, and have the process built on that. Is, is my understanding what you mentioned correct? Is it? Fantastic. And then the mindsets to suit that is the people side, uh, as you mentioned. Sure. Thanks for sharing that. Sonal, would you like to um, add your piece as well? Sorry, Ati, go ahead. Absolutely. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Sonal. I I just wanted to, you know, very simplistically put this entire concept that FT explained to be a consultative mindset. We are not just building something for the customer because he or she is asking for it. We are building it to be a thought partner to them. And therefore, if you have an expertise and you have that envisioning capability within your organization that, you know, if a customer and they might think from a very, uh, you know, in a, in a very directive manner. But if you are a consultant and if you have done your research enough, you have that talent capability within your organization, you have that envisioning and envisaging kind of power and capability, I think you would go and tell them what can be recommended, what you could do and, uh, you know, help them to build the things for the future. From the scalability perspective point of view and many other things. It's all about when when, when you talk about the role of people and processes, they definitely need to be revisited in this current context because you know all those yesteryear things could be a passe by in certain cases how do we actually look at them with fresh pair of eyes and bring that in a very integrated and foolproof manner to ensure that we are doing something which is new which is driving transformation for us as organization and what do you mean by digital transformation for an organization ultimately it actually boils down to digital transformation for your customer right so understanding their gamut of things, their market market segment, doing that research and giving that kind of a consultative feedback or suggestions or guidelines to them mm-hmm. is something which the customers today are looking forward for. In in you know many of our organization, I'll give you a very classic example. In one of my past organizations, we simply had to, you know, people actually came up to HR saying that we were on waterfall method and our leader now is asking us to go on agile methodology without explaining as to why what how getting them you know uh, inclusive about why we are doing the things that we are doing and why are we shifting uh, did not happen appropriately and that's where you know in including that entire aspect of why we are doing things why the transformation bent of mind is required i think forget about the technology piece it will happen on its own 
of course we have to do a lot of things in curated form but it is more about the mindset and bringing people to a common platform where they will think as to why they are doing these things and how they should do it differently that's my perspective about uh, you know this entire fantastic thing. thanks a ton sonal for for adding that i think it's it's important as you look at it and as we go deeper into the from an org standpoint to look at you know what some of the things people thanks for sharing that mark would you like to add your piece as well I think you're on mute, Mark. If I may ask you to unmute yourself. Not very different from what Sonal and Ft have to say. Right. Uh, but having said that, I think uh, it's very. If if at all, there was a point in time where understanding the value chain of business was the most critical. I think this is that time. You know, for the longest while, as people in HR, people in marketing, people in finance, people in IT, typically enabling functions. could go about saying we were subject matter experts in the space we managed mm-hmm. but today i think the appreciation for that subject matter knowledge should be embedded in the value chain of the organization because otherwise it is a round peg in a square hole you know and that's exactly i think what sonal was also trying to say because understanding the nature of business understanding the game you're playing becomes very important so for us today i think it has become increasingly important at porter to look at people who come under who have an appreciation for technology mm-hmm. who will teach you business because teaching business is easy teaching technology if you don't have the scientific bent of mind teaching technology if you don't come with an appreciation for technology mm-hmm. teaching technology if you do not come with a curiousness that says how can i be better than what i am is not an easy task sure so the focus today is on bringing techno functional guys where the appreciation for technology is inherent we'll teach you business rather than going the other way around where you say you bring in an hr guy who doesn't necessarily understand technology or you bring in somebody who understands finance but only finance doesn't understand how you are going to use technology to enhance finance in a way that cuts cost in a way that builds uh, you know uh, synergies across business for better decision making and therefore faster decision making speaking to your pnl that is something that we are seeing as a shift today and uh, then the appreciation for the value chain like for us today the entire value chain at insurance is about product management because that is the heart of the business you know you have to have products to sell right right so you have product management then you have the entire sales and distribution piece then you have business underwriting then you have claim settlement and payments and then finally you have customer service which is increasingly gaining so much of importance because initially it used to be a push business today sure. increasingly we are seeing it becoming a pull business and that is entirely dependent on the quality of products and the kind of customer service that you are providing along with it and therefore the entire conversation between how your customer service loops back to your product management which then speaks to how you build an effective sales and distribution then you look at how you want to underwrite the business then understanding where your claims are actually being settled against against what kind of policies against what kind of disasters against what kind of medical exigency so on and so forth and that is where your iot your machine learning your predictive analysis and all of that starts to come in so that's the entire gamut and then your people's ability to appreciate this because if i do not appreciate the entire value chain i will build the best products but i will not be able to look at looping it to how it speaks to my snd how it speaks to my customer service and what impact it is having on my claims and settlement and put you know so there is where the agile piece that sonal spoken starts to come in because if you just going to tell your people tomorrow i want you to be agile mm-hmm. why would they want to be agile if they don't understand where this agile thought philosophy is coming from and how it impacts their roles how it impacts uh they are growth in the organization so therefore also prepping the organization from a change management perspective saying this is the strategy this is where we are headed and this is how it impacts your function and your role and hearing their concerns because they have valid concerns 
Sure. And then taking those into how you build your change management interventions becomes the entire transformation piece, Rohan. And it takes time and patience. Absolutely. A lot of patience. Absolutely. What I'm also hearing all the three of you say is this music to my ears, right? This is not something that is, here's what we're going to do and here's how we're going to do it, right? It's about co-creating, you know, with folks across levels, understanding the why we're doing this and what does it entail for each of them, where they're coming from, right? And so this could be different for different functions. It could be different for you to look at, um, you know, different perhaps geographies, if you will. And I also am hearing it beautifully in terms of different parts of BFSI, how that's coming out. So thanks, uh, you know, for sharing all the three of you on, 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 on that particular piece. Now, there's one thing I wanted to kind of double click on a little bit. Um, and, you know, all the three of you would like to hear your perspectives. Uh, we've spoken about the process piece, the people piece, right? And, and if you were to zero and down, you know, for the benefit of our, our audience here as well, uh, there is, of course, uh, you know, there are multiple skills uh, and multiple behaviors one would talk about. But from your lens and your experience uh, within the organizations that you're in, uh, what does a modern day digital transformation champion look like? So are there uh, perhaps some traits uh, that you may want to sort of call out? And perhaps if there's also a way, how can one develop those just uh, from your perspective and open to perhaps anyone who'd probably want to go in first? So I'll take that one sure, to be very honest. It will be a very preposterous thing to say what a modern day digital champion will look like, because I think we are all on a journey and nobody really knows, right? What, because technology itself is changing. So to say I'm a champion today is, is like saying I have arrived. Right. There is no point of arrival and we have to make peace with that new normal. There is no more a point of arrival, but having said that, Perhaps people who are willing to push the boundaries on their thinking, mm -hmm. people who are willing to take those risks, fail and learn fast from it. And people at the end of the day, who are people's people, you know, the, it has to be the head and the heart. It can't be excessively head or excessively heart. Dono ko lekar chalna hai. Dil ko bhi lekar chalna hai. Dimaag ko bhi lekar chalna hai. Logon ko lekar chalna hai. Or company ko bhi aage hai. So somebody who understands that sweet spot is somebody to my mind who will be able to bring about or rather play a very meaningful role as far as the transformation is concerned. And that is to my mind, the way I look at it. And there will always be people who will not take to it very openly. And it's fine. The right. idea is not to make everybody a digital stalwart right right so you have to identify that there will be one part of your organization that will struggle there'll be one part of your organization that sits on the fence and there will be one part of your organization that is excited and looking at moving forward right now the idea is how does your strategy speak to each of these guys because all of them are playing a part in driving your strategy right Absolutely. and it's not that people don't want to grow but enabling to grow by meeting them where they are right. becomes important. You can't expect them to meet you where you are. Wonderful. And that is why the human transformation of this entire thing becomes a very, very important aspect because at the end of the day, digital digitalization, you know, of technology is the digitization part is technology, but the digital transformation part is people. And this is where that piece comes in and therefore the appreciation of that. Wonderful. Two, two quick things that I saw. One is the fact that it's, uh, for those of us, you know, if, uh, just to kind of make the sense of this, it's a head and the heart both. It can't be just one, right? Taking both of them together. And, and this reminds me of, of one of the things that Satya Nadella has spoken in one of his interviews, right? Said so when he said that growth mindset needs to come to the organization, the first piece some of us team did that this person doesn't have a growth mindset. And he said, that's not the objective. It is to say that everybody would have their own perspective. How do you create an environment where okay. people want to learn and challenge? Thanks, Mark, for, for sharing that. Sonal, I, uh, I saw you unmute, but you want to add to that as well? Yeah, I I personally feel that, you know, somebody who can challenge their own core beliefs is an important trait that a champion carries. I agree with Mark uh, completely uh, when he mentions that we are not champions, we are on this journey and it, it's a continuous journey, right? But 
there has to be somebody who you know walks forward and thinks forward and takes the plunge of doing things differently so it has to be top to down approach definitely but generally when you talk about change champions or digital transformation champions they definitely have to challenge their core beliefs they definitely have to to be open for disruptions right uh, the ability to connect dots from people perspective from technology perspective from strategy perspective from business leader perspective etc is very very pivotal they can't be working in silo so somebody who can bring those dots together and look forward for early adopters as rightly mentioned some people will be sitting on the fence some people are you know jump there jump into that particular new arena and some actually wait and you know, less risk takers but the moment you start creating a bunch of early adopters you will see that your transformation initiatives becomes you know they scale at a faster rate they can be extrapolated at a faster rate they actually spread like fire and that is very important so all in all champions will also keep learning in this journey but they definitely the some of the important and critical traits is you have to challenge yourself core beliefs connect the dots and data driven mindset is also equally important because unless you look into the data and you draw insights out of it and make a candid decision about whether this is required and how will i drive this is very critical at this point in time absolutely wonderful thanks to tan as uh, well for the thoughts ft would you like to add uh, your perspective as well uh well i couldn't agree more with all the points uh i i'm not going to add anything anything more but uh in my many years of uh, change management uh you know either is a big campaign or it is a small little thing that requires changing in a system or in an organization it i realize that there are champions at every level right there are champions at the the top level and there are champions all the way down uh, everywhere the question is this the moment we brand them as champions then they cease to be that's that that's the, the the paradoxical thing right you call it i i know you know uh when change management was such a buzzword in the early 2000s you know where organizational development organizational change and so on it was such a buzzword about 20 years ago um uh, change champion was one of the key thing is a is a role in any organization like change champion interestingly by and large change champions fail and the reason why they fail is we put on such unreal expectations on these people whilst they are still learning this is change by the way and you brand them as a change champion they are still learning the change process they are part of the change process now we need to understand that being a part of a change process there is no champion all of us are constituent of that change process it's just that there are some who are learning faster there are some who are advocates right they there are some who may not have the skill but they have the heart to do it they they want to do it so they they want to learn but there are some who obviously learn faster they adopt faster like what's not saying early adopters and successful adopters as well uh what we should be doing rather than branding them as change champions is how do we showcase some of them how do we position them without calling them these are the champions you have to role model them because that's the danger because we cannot role model there's only one you know uh, of of such person and we are all unique uh it is what would be uh, if you ask me what would be some of the key traits well it is pretty standard i think key traits they are open uh, to to change uh, they learn fast so agility to learn and learn is very quick uh, they are an absolute uh you know they they are a magnet for knowledge they are magnet mm-hmm. to learn new things so apart from that it's it's uh, really you know uh, the change process is new to everyone uh even if it's done in another organization right if digitalization transformation or digital transformation is done successfully in another organization then we thought okay that's best practice let's bring it here and magically it would work it doesn't 
it has not worked ever if we want to replicate something that is done in MasterCard, for example, uh, in another organization, because culture is so different. The infrastructure is so different. Mindset is so different. The, the maturity, the, the readiness are so different. So I would be wary if uh, we want to start branding and putting a specific specifications. So human beings are not uh, a piece of machine. We can't have a spec uh, saying that this is what it means to run at this particular speed, uh, right. at this particular rate. So yeah, that, that, that's my, my two cents. You know, I, I'm, I'm well not sure said. how it reflects on, on, on you guys. Well said. I think, you know, in the interest of time, I want to squeeze one question from the audience just to ensure that we're able to maybe take a minute each, right, uh, in the interest of time. Uh, given that we have folks here, you know, who are from looking at it from the capability development standpoint, uh, if you were to look at, you know, how from, from your organization standpoint, uh, you've addressed the capability building, uh, you know, piece from digital transformation, if you could just share some thoughts, perhaps a minute each, if that's okay. Um, and uh, yeah, perhaps Sonal, would you want, probably want to go in first? Yeah, sure. So uh, when you talk about capability development in the scope, with the scope of uh, digital transformation, uh, for any organization, it's very important for us to understand what are our strategic priorities. So I think most organizations define the strategic priorities for maybe a year, for two years, three years. And basis that, what is that we deliver to our customer today? What does the customer demand look like? And aligning to that, what is that we need to deliver tomorrow? So today's skills and tomorrow's skills, between that, these gaps are identified. Uh, in our organization, what we try to do is we actually nail down on very critical top five priorities and try to run programs around those when it comes to learning. And when I say learning, it is not only about digital learning or it is not an, only about, you know, a, a classroom learning, but I'm also talking about uh, multiple other avenues of learning, on-the-job learning kind of pieces where, you know, a lot of projects are given, there are a lot of hackathons that happens, uh, there are a lot of other initiatives that happen where we actually help our employees or the talent landscape to think innovative, think differently. Capability development in any scope cannot only happen only through learning, right? And capability development is not a problem that sure shot can be solved only by training programs or learning programs. Right. We all have to agree to that fact, right? It is a holistic approach. Everybody has to be having their skin in the game to ensure that our talent is capable enough. So the avenues that you open up has to be multifold. On the job yeah. kind of learning, opportunities for them, allowing them to fail fast, learn from their failures, share the success stories, a lot of stuff that we do, having mentorships, uh, giving them opportunities and raw problem statements to solve and bring some of the POCs. There are multiple things that we do when it comes to capability development. Fantastic. Thanks a ton, Sonal, for, for your piece. Mark, would you like to uh, next? So the way we are approaching it is we started off with a very clear understanding from the top about what is our strategy and where is it that we want to play the game? You know, and to enable that strategy, what is the kind of projects, what are the kind of work areas and work buckets we'd like to pick up? And to make that possible, what are the skill gaps we had to identify? Because to bring those projects alive that speak to strategy, you need skills. So that was the starting point for us. And then from there, getting a realistic estimation of where we stand with our talent pools. So understanding the whole spiel of, of the population we have, how many of us are digital rookies? How many of us are digital you know, explorers? How many of us are digital pace setters? How many of us are digitally sound and fit? And that's where the entire legend map played out and then understanding for each of those target areas what are the capability development interventions we take both on the HR side as far as OD is concerned as well as from a business side. So while we did have a lot of discussions on what went into each of those pieces we had journeys which looked at classroom learning, cross-functional projects, Agile teams that spoke to the different projects that we were working on, mentoring and coaching. And of course, a lot of reviews along this so that you are able to judge where people are 
And if you're failing, enable that failure to happen fast and move. And in addition to this, also getting a sense of how does each of this speak to their personal aspirations? Because at the end of the day, if I am not, you know, I'm comfortable being where I am and I do not have the fire, that's where the skill sets come in, right? We spoke about digital champions. Right. That's where we also had to identify how many of our people in the digitally fit category were also wanting, just because you're digitally fit doesn't make you a champion, right? So understanding that and then using these guys as brand ambassadors to percolate the message further. So this is the way we are approaching it. Early days, but... Uh, uh, that's the the larger piece that we are looking at over the next couple of years. Fantastic. Thanks a ton for sharing that, Mark. Uh, FT, would you like to just perhaps, uh, you know... Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be fast. I'll be, I'll be quick, right? Sure. Uh, tra traditional capability uh, upskilling or uplifting of capabilities normally look at three things, right? Attitude, skills, knowledge. Uh, that's obsolete. It has to be more than that. The two additional... Uh, things that we are doing. It's number one, purpose. Uh, alluding to what Mark said, aspirations and so on. But this purpose is aligning pur your individual purpose. You're fading out, FT. I can't. I think, yeah, uh, uh, FT seem to have lost you. Uh, critical, right? Because then you're and, and maximize an option. And then because, can you hear me? We can hear you now. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. Right. So I was saying purpose, aligning to purpose. That's, that's uh, one additional piece to the three traditional ones. And uh, the last couple of years help us understand that well being is paramount regardless of what capability uplifting that we have, no matter how aligned we are, but if we are not taking care of our people and our, the well-being of our people are not taken care of, none of none matters. Nothing else matters, right? So right. well-being becomes a big part. And interestingly, if you think that well-being is not a capability, it is. Uh, a lot of us have no idea how to take care of ourselves, have no idea how to take care of uh, our own well-being. Uh, and organizations' uh, objectives in terms of, uh, you know. I think we seem to be losing you a little bit here. Aren't always very alert that doing, yeah. Yeah, I think we seem to have lost some part of this uh, you know, uh, the purpose piece, the well-being piece sort of came through well, yes, but yes, I think yes, we've lost the connection a bit there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So purpose and well-being are the two that I want to talk about. And well-being is is key for me right. Uh, right. because a lot of us take for granted that well-being is a ingrained uh, and it is a standard. All of us right. know how to take care of ourselves. We right. don't. Yeah, Interestingly, yeah. we don't. And I will leave with this. We can do good and do well at the same time. And when we do well, is not doing well for, uh, or the, for the company or the organization only. We right. want to do well for ourselves. Yeah. And doing well, it is not getting more money or whatever. Doing yeah, well yeah. is taking care of our health. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you know, top of the hour, uh, you know, and, and, and I really, really, uh, you and, know, and, just, yeah. Sorry, FT, I think we, we really are losing my sincere apologies. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear us as well. We need, we need to learn that. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I just wanted to essentially, I, I know we can perhaps, uh, you know, uh, extend this conversation, you know, much longer, but I think in the interest of time, perhaps there could be a, you know, part two, uh, you know, for us to continue this. But what I wanted to do is just maybe take a minute to summarize some of the aspects that we've spoken here, um, you know, as we come towards a closure, I know we're about four minutes beyond time. Uh, we sort of started essentially with looking at, you know, digital transformation, usually uh, from the lens of technology and people. And we realized, of course, it is the mindsets and the people that's, uh, of course, key. We also saw how, uh, you know, the customer is at the center of this. So when you say uh, the business value that comes in, if the customer is not at the center, you know, inside out doesn't quite help. 
I like what some of us mentioned in a quote is that, you know, there can't be a digital champion in that sense. Uh, it's a journey that we're on, right? And to ensure that we're not deviating on it uh, as we go along. And thanks a ton for sharing some of the aspects of uh, how you view the capability building from your uh, organization standpoint. Um, you know, we are committed at Nolscape to be able to uncover some of these aspects as we go along, uh, you know, across industries, across geographies, and understanding how we're able to share this uh, with, with uh, you know, our audiences. Uh, thank you very much, Sonal. Uh, thanks, Mark. Thank you, FT, for taking the time today to be with us um, and look forward to stay connected. Um, thank you, audience, for sparing your time to be with us as well and, and uh, you know, for being patient listeners. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yes. Thanks. Bye. -bye. So, bye.